Hey guys, we're now able to see teams that we are a part of and that we've created. So I'm currently logged in as Bob17. He has created Team 1 and Team 2. And because he's the owner, he should be able to create channels and invite people. But I'm also part of Team A and Cool Team. And these teams I'm a member of, but I don't have owner status. So I should not be able to create channels um, or invite people. But it still lets me do that right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a permission to our back end to stop that from happening. And then we're going to also on our front end not even display these um, items if they are not the owner of the team. So let's start with the back end over here. So with our create channel, we want to first make it require authentication. Right now you can create a channel and not even be logged in uh, the way we have it set up. So let's first guard against that. And the way we do that is by using this requires auth function that we have. So paste that in. And I'm just going to say requires auth dot create resolver. And wrap the whole thing. I went one too far. There we go. So now our create channel, you have to be logged in at least to create a channel. But now in our try our try catch here, we need to also check whether you're the owner of this team. So if we check our schema, notice how we're getting the team ID here. So what we can do is we can actually fetch the team that this is associated with. So I'm gonna say const team is equal to await models.team.find1 and we're gonna say where we're going to say id is equal to args.teamid. And I'm going to make this a raw query. So now I can just check if uh, we'll say team.id, or we'll say owner, is not equal to user.id. And the user we get, whoever's logged in. Then we want to return an error. So we're going to say OK is false, and errors or to an array in the path here. We're going to say name and message is going to be you have to be the owner of the team to add to create channels. OK. Otherwise, we should get past this little if statement block that we check here and uh, await the response. All right, so we shouldn't see this button, but let's see. We should be stopped from actually making a team here. So when I create the team, we get cannot read property channels of undefined. Not sure why we're getting that. I don't see any errors here. If I refresh, let's make sure nothing pops up. Good, doesn't look like it's getting created. Let's look deeper at that message though and see why we're getting an error message like that. So cannot read property channels of undefined. So that looks like it's in our update function. So if I come over here to add team modal, or add channel modal, right here, we're saying after the create team, if it's not okay, we just return, which doesn't look like it's happening. We put okay is false, so why don't we in our console.log. Oh, it could be in our optimistic UI here that could be breaking things. I think that's what's happening, so let's just do a console log here and log okay. Or, you know, let's log create channel. This is the response from our mutation, and we can see what the values it takes. Yep, so it looks like OK is true, and then it's undefined, and then OK is false. So the OK true here is because of the optimistic UI we have here. So it thinks creating a channel will work, but it actually doesn't. All right, so we're not going to really worry about trying to fix this error from happening. Um, instead, we're really just going to hide this button from the user if they're not an owner. Now, we want to do the same thing for uh, inviting people, making sure you, you can't invite people when you're 
not the owner of a team, and that should already be good. I believe if we head over to our resolver, our team resolver over here, add member, we're checking if uh, team owner is not equal to the user ID. So let's add Bob at Bob17. So I am Bob17. Let's invite Bob18 to this team. We should get an error. Yep, cannot add members to the team. Awesome. Ideally, we show that error here, but I'm not going to worry about fixing that. Now in our front end, we're just going to prevent um, them from checking that. Now, the way I was doing that last time is, so this is, yep, this is our UI. In my GraphQL over here, I was trying to add an owner like this, right? And the reason for that is I thought the owner was just an integer, like it is in our database. But I forgot in my schema, I made owner a user, which makes sense. But we don't really actually need to have the whole user, so I'm just going to make this an integer for now. Because our team should return the owner, which is an integer. Because if I look at my user, or user, user model, or my team, notice how we have an association to user and we call it owner. So this is going to be an integer of the ID, which is all we really need to check whether they're the owner or not. So we're going to change that to an int, and then we might come back and change this to a user type if we need more data in the future. So now when I grab the owners here, we shouldn't get any problems. Let's see. All right, cool. So no errors. So in our sidebar over here, um, we get past, I believe we get past the team. Yep, the current team. And we pass that to our channels. We also pass the team ID. We also want to pass in the owner ID. So so owner is going to be equal to team.owner. So in our channels over here, we can grab that prop. And then we can conditionally render this. So if owner is equal to the current user, and how are we going to get the current user? So that is stored in a JWT token. And this is really logic that shouldn't go in this component itself. So what I'm going to do is pass, do the check up here in my sidebar, since we are already even decoding the token here. And then just pass the result to this channels component. Because what I was going to do is grab this owner and do something like local storage dot get item and get the token, and then look at the token and see whether they're a user or whatever up here before I render. But let's not even bother with that. Let's just say um, pass is owner. So if is owner is true, then we want to display this chunk right here, which is invite people, and then in our channel right here we have a little add uh, a little plus icon we only want to display that if they are the owner so if is owner is true then we'll go ahead and display that otherwise we won't so now in our sidebar up here we have the user and now what we can do is we can say const or we'll say let is owner is equal to false and is owner is equal is set to true if user.id is equal to team.owner. So the team we get passed in here is the current team. So if the current team's owner is equal to the user.id we get from the token, then we're gonna set is owner and pass it in here. So is owner is equal to is owner. And now I'm gonna get rid of this owner I have here. Okay. So now you can see we don't see the little plus and the little thing here for the cool team. But if I come over here to a team that I actually own, like team one, I see both of these. And now if I try to add a channel, it should still work because I own this team. But now I don't even see this value here. So that's awesome. So that is a nice little addition. Now I want to do one other quick thing. And this is kind of an optional thing because right now what we have works and I want to talk about how we're grabbing um, the invite teams right now. If we look at how this query is working um, I believe it's right here this is a little bit small but we are doing a I believe inner join. Let's see if we can find the word inner join here. Yep here's inner join. 
and we're joining members and then with that we are also joining um, onto the user uh, the user table so we're basically doing yep here's in the other join so enter join one enter join two to grab the users and the members which makes sense because if we look here we're saying team we want to include um, the user and for it to do that because this is a many-to-many -many relationship um, it has to join basically this table with the member table and the member table with this so the two joins but we actually only care about um, looking for the user ID so we don't actually need the whole user table we're actually sufficient with just the member table so we can simplify this to one join with the team and the member table so I'm going to show you guys how to do that so you saw how we use this include last time sometimes there's things that SQLite just can't do and I believe this is one of them where you can just enter joining with a uh, table or not that I know of. So we're, what they allow you to do is actually write the SQL query yourself. So that's what we're going to be doing. And it's very simple. What we're going to write and it'll save us one join. So optimizing the performance. Now if you just want to keep it like this, we should get the same result. Um, and it's just one extra join. But I'm going to be showing you how to make change this into a little bit more optimized. So I'm going to get rid of this for now or why don't I comment this out so you guys can see the before and after so copy that and we'll get rid of this here so now we're going to do models.sqlize.query so just like this and then we're going to pass in a model to tell it which model we want to create so it's a team model that it's going to be creating and then notice how you can add replacements here and put question marks and it takes whatever you have here and puts it where the question mark is. So I'm gonna move the UI over because we're not gonna do that anymore. So query. And so the first thing here I'm gonna put is just the model, which is gonna be models.team. Because that's what we wanna get. And then we're gonna write our query. So here we're gonna select all from teams and remember our database actually has underscores or is camel cased or not camel cased uh, snake case so it's going to be like user underscore ID so from teams and then we're going to enter join so enter or we'll just, we can just say join we don't have to say enter join uh, join users well, we don't need users members on and we're going to say team ID is equal to ID and ID here is our team and let's, I kind of wrote this backwards but it doesn't matter so we're grabbing the um, where the ID is equal to the team ID so team ID is in members IDs in teams and then we're just going to do a where and here we're going to be looking for the on our members we have a user ID where that's equal to whatever the current user is so that's a little question mark so that's our query and I'm gonna save that and it just crapped out I think this is I'm just trying to see if I have any kind of error here it could be this big comment block Oh, I need to wrap this with an R. There we go. So I just forgot to put a little parenthesis right there. So here's our query. I'm going to add the replacements. I believe it's called, yep, replacements. I put in the same thing. And I use my model. The model should go here too. So replacements. And the only thing we're going to replace is one question mark with the ID we have here. So user.id. So if I didn't make any mistakes, we'll see this query and see if we get the same thing on our front end. All right, cool. So it looks like it worked and we didn't get any errors because we get the same result here. Now, just to show you, this is what the um, 
SQL ice query created. So it did this, but then it also did one more join. So it did that, and then it did join user on user ID is equal to, and then users.id. And this is the users table. So join on the users table, and then where user underscore ID is equal to user ID. But we don't need that part because we don't need to know anything about the user. We just care about that user ID. Okay, so there we go. So sometimes in your code, you're gonna have to write your own SQL queries. So that's why it's good to write SQL. It's not that big of a loss if you were to write this, but it is slightly optimized to do that. All right, so I think everything's working the same with this. It looks good. So that is it for this video, guys. Thank you for watching. I think next what we're gonna do is start working on our little message pane right here and get some messages popping up and then maybe typing some stuff into this form. So as always, the code's gonna be up on GitHub and you can check it out if you wanna see anything we coded in this video. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video.